Welcome to the Film Entrepreneur Podcast, episode number 42. The way to get started is to quit talking about it and begin doing. Walt Disney. This is the Film Entrepreneur Podcast, where we teach you the top strategies, tactics, and growth hacks that every indie filmmaker needs to know to make money with their films. We are the podcast that puts the business back into show business. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Film Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, how to turn your independent film into a profitable business. It's harder today than ever before for independent filmmakers to make money with their films, from predatory film distributors ripping them off to huckster film aggregators who prey upon them. The odds are stacked against the indie filmmaker. The old distribution model of making money with your film is broken and there needs to be a change. The future of independent filmmaking is the entrepreneurial filmmaker or the film entrepreneur. In Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, I break down how to actually make money with your film projects and show you how to turn your indie film into a profitable business. With case studies examining successes and failures, this book shows you the step-by-step method to turn your passion into a profitable career. If you're making a feature film, series, or any other kind of video content, the Film Entrepreneur Method will set you up for success. The book is available in paperback, ebook, and of course, audiobook. If you want to order it, just head over to www.filmbizbook.com. That's film, B-I-Z, book.com. Now today on the show, we are going to show you how to sell your indie film using the powerful marketing tool called Facebook. Now I use Facebook ads with Indie Film Hustle, Bulletproof Screenwriting, and Film Entrepreneur, and I know the power that it has. But I got a Facebook ninja to come on the show. Today's guest is Kyle Prohaska, and Kyle is a Facebook ads specialist, and he's worked uh, on huge, big Hollywood movies like Hacksaw Ridge and just a ton of other um independent films, and Hollywood blockbusters. And he really understands what it takes to really use Facebook specifically uh, as a tool to get your message out. There are tricks of the trade, not just being able to slap up a trailer and put some money in boosting it. That doesn't work. There are specific things that you can do to actually better your chances of finding an audience online, how you use the algorithm from Facebook how you do all those kind of little ninja tricks. And we're going to go deep in the weeds on this episode. So guys, I really want you to, to pay attention. Might have to listen to this episode a few times. You might go back and refer to it when you're going to go do your campaigns. But it is super powerful and you can use uh, arguably the most powerful marketing tool on the planet to help you get your message out there regarding your film, your production company, yourself as a person, as an actor, as a filmmaker. However you want to use this tool you can do it. So Kyle and I get into the weeds. We really geek out, but we also have a lot of great information for everyone to understand. So if you just want to have a better understanding on how to use Facebook to market yourself or your projects, take a listen, get some, get some paper or, or your iPad, however you want to do it. Take those notes because there's an amazing amount of knowledge bombs in this epic interview and it will last for a while. So I think we're almost at an hour and 30, hour and 40 minutes in this episode. So much information, so much knowledge, it's it's scary. So without any further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Kyle Perhaska. I'd like to welcome to the show Kyle Perhaska, man. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for coming and shining a light on the mysterious world of um, internet marketing and Facebook ads and Facebook and all that kind of stuff, social media. Uh, in regards to filmmakers, because there's a lot of information out there about, you know, all the stuff we just talked about, but specifically for filmmakers, there's not a lot. So uh, right. I, I'm really grateful that you are, are coming down uh, as a Facebook ninja and sharing uh, your art with us, sir. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I think there's a lot of information out there and a lot of misinformation. So hopefully I can I can help out. All right, great. Now, uh, how did you get into this wonderful world of internet marketing? Kind of by necessity, just as a filmmaker, right. um, you know, I, I grew up in a really tiny town and made a movie with my friends and had my mom in it and, you know, like this, this insane little thing. Right. But I didn't know well, what to do with it afterwards. You know, who's going to find out about this thing? So 
I got into digital marketing because I had to. Um, and I think that that's, that's something that's, uh, kind of required now, if you're going to be a filmmaker, especially in the indie space, you really need to dive into this stuff and, and do what you can to learn about it. Um, and it changes so fast every day. It seems there's something new yes. happening new or some algorithm. Product. Yeah. They change something on you. It happens constantly. So, um, you know, I got into it back when honestly, a lot of it was very new, uh, you, you know, get especially away, you could get away with a lot of stuff back then. <laughs> oh man, it was it was really incredible. I kind of wish it was still that way, but of that's course. just not reality. <laughs> right. Um, but but yeah, even the way that that you even use this stuff effectively ch- seems to change so often that that when I talk to folks about it, they're still thinking about all of the old ways that used to work that don't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's pretty insane, and and I agree with you one hundred ten percent. I. I got into the internet marketing space on, on necessity as well. And I've been doing it since 2005 before all that kind of stuff was going on. Uh, but I have not gone down the rabbit hole nearly as deep as you have. So I'm very excited to ask you some questions that I want answers to. Go for it. <laughs> all right. So, um, can you give us an, exa- can you give us, first of all, a few examples of some of the projects you helped on, on Facebook and, and used, you know, your, your kind of ninja skills to kind of boost up. And what were those results? Yeah. Um, quite a few of them have been theatrical movies. You know, um, I, uh, what's, what's a list of projects. I should have had a list next to me because there's just been so many throughout the years, yeah, but, uh, I saw your IMDB. It's pretty impressive. You got like, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff 20, 30 there. features you worked on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on a lot of those too, it was a lot of like content creation for social. So mm-hmm. back when the organic stuff, and post was a big, you know, a much bigger deal even than it is now. People needed just so much content to get to keep the pages healthy, you know, that they had. Um, but like there are movies like um like War Room that came out last year, I made a lot of content for. Um there are little indies, uh or actually a Fathom event last night called The Price of Fame came out. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know when this will be heard by people, but uh, sure. it was a wrestling documentary, you know, so it was um, you know, running the page and running the advertising and trying to get people to go to a fathom event, which is like a one night event, you know, in theaters. Um, and then, uh, you know, a family movie called the stray that came out in theaters recently as well, which was kind of a, you know, cute family dog movie, very clean, kind of a throwback to the older Disney films that used to come out, you know, in the nineties on video, but, um, you know, movies like that, uh, and then, and then much, you know, bigger ones that I've either made content for or been on the teams for where, you know, like Hacksaw Ridge or, um, uh, uh, Patriots Day, a few others. So it's, it's kind of all over the place in terms of where I've got my finger in or helped or been a part of, not necessarily show run, but, uh, I also, um, also enjoy working on a lot of smaller stuff for, you know, indie filmmakers. So that might just mean somebody who's putting it out on iTunes and that's all they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, had a lot of fun um, working with uh, Alex Lehman. That you, yeah, of that course. You, Alex, friend yeah. of the show, Alex Lehman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He had his movie Asperger's R Us coming out mm-hmm. and, uh, and they didn't have kind of a, a internet strategy at the time. It was kind of traditional PR and whatever they could mm-hmm. muster through kind of the Duplass, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, machine that they've got built over there. So, uh, so yeah, I kind of worked with them and built up a Facebook page as quick as I could and pushed the trailer out and it did really good. So now can you talk a little bit about just the basics of social media and what, you know, the very, very basic things that filmmakers need to have and do if they're succeeding as either an individual, uh, as a project or as a, a company, and, and, and this different strategies kind of that you, the basic stuff that you need. Right. Yeah. I think, I think kind of like a movie, um, or a show that you develop now, your, your strategy form is everything. Mm-hmm. So if you pick the wrong, uh, starting point, you could build everything from the wrong place and, and it's not going to do for you what you want it to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, a basic, a basic thing to have just as a person is you have to decide, am I a company or am I a person? You know, am I, <laughs> what is my, you know, that whole brand. idea of What's your brand? Right. Yeah. You know, and, and that can get, um, in the weeds really fast when people start talking about brands, cause it sounds very like generic and no one knows what it, it's trying to mean. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, deciding that first, it's like, where is the home base where your stuff is going to be? You know, Twitter account, a Facebook account, Facebook page, you know, it's the, you have to pick what you want to focus on because 
for an indie filmmaker, especially you have the problem of segmenting everything too much mm-hmm. in it where you, you don't have enough pull to sprout out everything, you know? So, um, you know, the very basics are, uh, you know, creating a page for either your company or yourself, you know, deciding if you're going to launch all your stuff from a singular place, which is, that was, that would be what I would suggest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, concentrate your engagement in a few places that you're going to be most effective based on what your interest level is to some folks create a page and they really don't have a strategy or don't plan on focusing on it. And it's not going to be effective for them because they're just not interested, you know, in the end. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's hard to lay out exactly a, a basic list, but what you decide to focus on and what's going to take advantage of your own strengths as a person mm-hmm. is, is where you're going to want to focus. Because a lot of times I, I find that, that filmmakers make the mistake of building up uh, something specifically for just one movie. Right. And that's fine. But then that audience that they build up for that movie you know, let's say you, you do an Asperger's documentary and the next movie is you're, you're doing an action. Uh, right. th- those audience are not going to be the same. And then you've got to kind of start from scratch where, like you were saying, if you have a central hub where you can sprout everything out of, it makes a little bit more sense. Is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes the movie is going to dictate that, right? Like on Asperger's R Us, it was having, having it come from a page called Asperger's R Us documentary, Mm -hmm. you know, was really valuable as opposed to kind of a generic company name. So, and in in some cases it makes a lot of sense for it to be separate. So it can kind of have its own life. And, um, you know, there are things to consider with advertising, whereas the, where the, the page that it's coming from is actually going to help you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, you know, for SEO reasons. Well, for more for uh, when you know when an ad unit loads for people, mm-hmm. um, they're they're going to see what page it's from, and on a movie like that, the targeting was all about you know the autism community and mm-hmm. the Asperger's community and just that whole group of people, whether they have it or they have family members that have it. Mm-hmm. Seeing that word was really important. You know, sure. it was it was just really important for people to know quickly. Hey, this is something. This is about something I understand. You know. Um, so some random name or a company name they don't recognize would have not like killed everything, but it certainly w- wouldn't be helpful. Um, so yeah, it's just, it really depends on the project. Now, how should a filmmaker build an audience on his or her Facebook page? Um, I'll be honest for me personally, um, since I've kind of like transitioned my focus out of where I started, which was more like the faith and family space and then moved into more uh, mainstream stuff. I've, I've focused a lot on my own personal page for now, you know, until I kind of get my ducks in a row and figure out how I want to move forward. Mm -hmm. Um, so for some people, for a lot of indie filmmakers, their own personal Facebook account is going to be where some of their effectiveness is going to come from the most. Um, just because it's where they're already interacting with like their closest friends and family. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, but if they have a page that's theirs, you know, the, the, the thing that used to be the old way uh, would be it was all about likes, right? Page likes. It was all about um, how big is your base on there. Uh, it, but what that did is it created a lot of created a lot of waste and a lot of um, uh, what's the right word? Glut, I guess you would say. Where where people, yeah, people would um, you know pay money and try and build up this big number that didn't really mean anything, right. you know, for them. Um, buying likes, buying follows, yeah, buying yeah. all that stuff. Oh sure. man, it was so bad. You know, it I've, still I've, is. It still is. Yeah, it is. It's awful. It. Like trying to buy views on YouTube. Like I, I had, I had a filmmaker once uh, that I worked on his movie. He's like, I got 4 million views of my trailer on YouTube. And I'm like, but you've got like two people who said anything. So it's obviously fake. <laughs> and, and he thought that just because he had four billion, that was like this huge selling point that he could walk right. into any distributor and go look at the fan base. Right, right. And and I think I think where things have transitioned is it's not that you don't want to have a base, be, you know, because that's helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, but growing it is incredibly difficult and expensive if you're focusing on just like making a page bigger directly, mm-hmm. as opposed to pushing content that is specific you know, and, and growing data around the pieces of content because people are, people are so bored now with pages that do nothing but post, you know, articles and inspirational memes and stuff. It's just, they've, they've gotten wise to, um, the game and and everything has become so saturated. So, 
you know, when I talk to filmmakers and they have a movie that has no juice at all, where the page is brand new and has a hundred likes on it, you know, I it's tell them, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You know, and I tell them like focus on, if you're going to spend any money, for instance, if you're going to focus your efforts, put it on the actual centerpiece of content for your movie. And that's your trailer. You know, your trailers like ground zero. If you can't get anybody to finish 90 seconds of what you've got, you're, they're probably not going to rent or, or, or look it up in any other capacity. So, you know, and, and the, the difference from a few years back, you know, five years ago versus today is what, what you can do and the kind of audiences you can make, um, and, and track and retarget is, is way different. Um, it used to all be about growing your page big. So when you'd post the sample size of people that would see it would be big enough to like, you know, create a little bit of a wave for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that has kind of been replaced in my mind with, you know, targeted ad spend, even on a lower level where the data you get to keep now, Mm -hmm. um, it, all the numbers kind of are behind the scenes now where it used to be everybody was focused on how big is your page. Well, a page can have a thousand people on it, but because I put enough good spend on a trailer, I might have half a million people behind the scenes that have finished a trailer that I can then, you know, go after and retarget, not with organic posts, you know, and things that you would traditionally do, but that is a, that is radically powerful. So, yeah. so, but so on an organic post standpoint, now we're going to st- excuse, excuse us audience. We're going to get into the geek now. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to get into the weeds here. So bear with us in the organic post. Uh, and by the way, the definition of an organic post is you just literally posting something on Facebook. You just, you know, literally post it and that's it. Yeah. But, it's distribution that it gets just from Facebook's algorithm to right. whoever they happen to, you know, deliver it to. It's, it's without any money on it. Now, what all. I found though is cause I'll, you know, Facebook a few years ago changed their algorithm to the point now, even if you have, a, you know, a thousand people on your Facebook page, you will only, if you do an organic post without a link, you might get, if you're lucky, 5%, more like 2 or 3%. If you put right. a link in it that that leaves Facebook, then you're dropping that percentage even down more. Correct. But what I have found is that if the content is strong and it starts getting shared organically without any money to it, it becomes very powerful. And to the yep. point where I was like, wow, I, I was shocked because I post a lot on Facebook and through my own marketing for indie film hustle and as i posted stuff i started seeing 20 30 40 50 shares which for me is a lot yeah and and i'm like wow and i'm starting to get this massive reach and i haven't spent a dime right so it's like so it's possible if the content is really solid that you could kind of go uh, arguably viral uh, and that's Correct. with links too, by the way. So yeah, that, I mean that that is becoming less and less common because of yeah. those changes you mentioned. But like, sure. you know, even on my personal profile, um, I'm I'm because on my personal profile, I try not to promote very much. Just for me personally, it's mostly sure. pictures of my kids or mm-hmm. a really interesting article or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the same principle that I kind of use for pages, I use for my personal account. Where if I post too much, you know, I, I seem to kind of get punished for that. Where if I post the very best stuff, the most interesting stuff, the stuff I really, really care about, you know, spread out enough. Um, I tend to do much better, you know, where Facebook is also looking on a post by post basis, how quickly you get how much engagement. So if something gets response, you know, quickly right away, it tends to have a longer organic tail, you know, um, and it will push it a little bit more maybe. Right. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does because it it's sorting through the zillions of posts coming through at any given time. And it's trying to bias towards whatever seems to be getting the most engagement. So the faster you have shares and comments and likes, um, the better that post is going to do in the long run. So post time, you know, is, is a factor, which that can be really hard to, to kind of determine what's mm. the best time of day, um, to, to try and post something where it's likely to be seen by enough people, uh, in a short period of time that are actually going to like what I've got, you know, we're not going to see it a day from now or whatever. 
Um, you know, so it used to be a lot more about that organic reach and then things that, you know, they changed that algorithm, which some people were very upset about, um, because of how radically different things were seemingly the next day. Yeah. Because Uh, basically Facebook said, okay, now you've got, you've built your audience on our platform in our sandbox. We control our sandbox. So now if you want access to those people that you've worked hard to get to, you're going to have to pay. Well, and what, and what it, what it also seemed like to, you know, and in, and I know there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy right now about all, about Facebook in particular, but like yes. <laughs> you know, they it, it's I almost wonder how much of that was earned and how much of that was getting lots of help from them at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, similar to kind of what Netflix did with their own catalog, where pe- they were buying up seemingly everything a number of years ago. Um, it seemed like they were just grabbing everything they could before they kind of started putting money into their own stuff you know, making their own stuff. They seem to be buying everything and you would go on Netflix for a year or two there. And it seemed like they had every schlocky thing you could imagine, you know, filling their catalog with the occasional good movie in there. Um, right. You know, well, there, there was that time period of we're going to, to really ramp up how much stuff we have and really try and get a lot of people in here really quickly Um, and then they kind of backed off on that and started making more, you know, stuff. it's kind of like Facebook was, you know, pushing things and helping things along before they scaled it all back. Right. Uh, Cause they got their audience, your audience building, you're building up your base. Yeah. And that's yeah, business. But, right. And, 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 you know, on the paid end, I mean, I know a lot of folks, especially if you're an indie filmmaker, the idea of paid advertising makes you want to like cringe sometimes. Um, but I think it's, I think it's probably the most powerful thing available to any oh, indie filmmaker now. Um, if they're willing to take a look at it, understand what it means, you know, compared to what things used to be like, you know, it's like, now I can, now I can launch a trailer for someone or for my own thing and have a really good idea of like a measurable idea Mm -hmm. of of who's watching it and how much of it. And, and I can, if I have a budget for that, I can scale those numbers. Like that never used to be possible. You would just furiously email, tweet, post, and just hope (laughs) <laughs> no, you're that, absolutely right. It's yeah, it's become surgical, um, right? Facebook, right. beyond any other platform, including Google Ads, the amount of information they have on their customer mm-hmm. and about their likes and their mood and everything yep. is so massive. It's scary how massive it is. It is. <laughs> it's a little um, scary. It's a little scary, man, because you. I mean, I get. I mean, I'm on Facebook obviously all the time, so. I get stuff on my feed and I'm like, how did you know I wanted that? Right. You know, right. I, wanna, I was thinking about pizza. Why? I, how did, you know, and then there's a Domino's ad and I'm like, what? You know, it, how it, is that? Oh, it's yeah. terrifying. It, uh, it, it is a bit terrifying, but yet I kind of like it, but I don't, I don't like that because <laughs> it's, it's actually stuff I want. So like, I'll get, this, this is the advertising philosophy that I kind of work with, which is I'm not trying to interrupt someone who, you know, isn't going like the plan is to get what someone's going to like as best as you can infer sure. in front of that person, not bombard the Internet and, and you know, hope that that five percent that it's actually for like it and engage with it like that. That used to be what you had to pay for. And you right? couldn't afford it. And you couldn't afford it. Yeah. That. You know, and you would pay for impressions on just a particular website where they would promise you. Oh, you yeah. Yeah many banner impressions but you have no idea who's seeing them how many times most of the time there's no proof there was no reporting not really just to click um, just click throughs if that yeah targeting used to be picking a website to put a banner on a bunch of times now i can go after the individual on their phone while they wait for their coffee you know it's it's crazy and know the time that they're, they're drinking their coffee I mean, it's yeah, yeah i can find out a lot more about who's engaging with it. And that can also inform the future money that you spend because now you're not kind of starting. I mean, I do believe to, and starting as close to the target as possible, not starting way out and spending a bunch of money to hone in Mm -hmm. as much as possible, try and find the super target, Mm -hmm. you know, and that might take you a little bit to find, but it's much better than dumping a lot of money on this massive, you know, massive target. You know, before I started educating myself on the process of Facebook ads, which we'll get to in a minute, um, you know, spending money on advertising, especially for any filmmakers, it's, it's, it seems, Oh, it's only 20 bucks here or 25 bucks there or whatever, uh, to start. But in a matter of seconds, 
it could be gone. And, 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 you know, if you, depending on how you set it up, you right. know, you, I yeah. mean like, Oh, I have a thousand dollar budget. Okay. I'm just going to set it up for a thousand dollars and you click the wrong thing and you spend a thousand bucks in a day. It is gone. Yeah. And if you didn't set it up properly and you didn't optimize it as a, yes. as, a as opposed to a slow drip as yeah. a, you know, to optimize and really understand who you're like, what kind of settings and all that, which we'll get into, uh, how to target it's gone. Mm-hmm. And that happened to me early on. I was like, Oh, and it scared the hell out of me. I was like, I'm out. Yeah. 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 I'm it's kind of like, it's like buying a stock that drops and you're like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. You know, hold and, up. And, 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 oh. and we're not trying to scare the audience, but it's the truth. If you don't know what you're doing or really don't have a, a, a an understanding of the process, mm-hmm. you know, and you start big, you're gone. Mm-hmm. And that's why oh, that doesn't work or it doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've been there. I know, I know those few moments where I'm like, Oh man, you know, it really is like just watching money light itself on, self on fire. Yeah. Um, and try but, to get a like, refund. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, I mean, it's, it just, it's, it can be a little scary and intimidating, but like, you know, that's, that's why I'm talking about it. Cause I think this, the, I don't want the fear to keep people away because I really, really think it's hard to be successful today. Um, without oh. at least starting to understand everybody wants to like get a distribution deal and, and deliver the hard drive and okay, you, you go figure it out. Yeah. Right. And that's just not, that's not reality anymore. Um, and, and it, and it requires a certain amount, just diving into this for anybody that's listening, who might be interested in it. You know, it's going to, it's going to require a lot more objectivity than, than we artists are used to requiring of ourselves, you yeah. know? Uh, and it's, and that's probably scarier than even the money where you're, you know, you have to step back and look at your, your movie that you just poured yourself into very differently than, than maybe you would prefer in order to right. succeed, you know? Oh, uh, I was, yeah. I just came back from AFM and, oh man, <laughs> they don't care if it's good, bad, or indifferent. They just, what's the poster? What's the trailer? Who's in it? It's a product. And, yeah. And artists don't like to look at their films as products, but at the end of the day, Right. It's a product that you have to sell if you want to maintain yourself. Yeah. How do you get that thing in front of someone who is interested enough to, you know, to rent it for four dollars or stream it or, or buy the DVD? You know, you have to look at that person differently. And I don't think I actually think it's the opposite of gross. I think that you you start with empathy for that person mm-hmm. and you think about when you're making your movie and when you go into advertising. Um, and actually thinking about advertising towards the front, not at the end, right, mm-hmm. is empathy for the audience. What are they – we do it when we make movies. What do they want to see next? What are they going to like? Mm-hmm. You know, What's going to take they, them out of their, their, day, you know, their, their bad day and, or entertain right. them or inspire them or anything? Which advertising more and more needs to do, right? It's not it, – it used to be – I think advertising, although it's, it's, it gets a – I understand why it gets a bad rap just as a concept period, right? But right. you know, I think it used to be more gross. Like oh, today, no, it's, it's yeah, I agree with you. Today it's so much there's benefit. Like we were saying, that Domino's pizza. Hey, I was thinking of a Domino's pizza. Hey, I got that thing now. That's right. nice as opposed to I'm in the middle of watching, you know, Breaking Bad and then there's a commercial for diapers. I'm like, I don't have kids. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you, you showing know, me this? Yeah, this is more that what we have now is more efficient. And, 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 you know, if it's used properly, just like any tool, it can be misused. We have seen that. Have we not? Oh, um, yes, we have. Yeah. So if used properly and with empathy by the person, you know, particularly a filmmaker who is hopefully making movies with empathy for the audience in mind in some way, um, you know, the idea is to put something in front of them that is, not going to annoy. That is something that they're going to like. That's the whole point. You know, you don't want to waste your money and, and put it in front of folks who don't care. Um, so you're wasting so, yeah. their time and your money. Of course. And yeah, your time, your money, their time. Like it's just, it's not, it's not the way it should be. Mm-hmm. So, so if you, if you, uh, how should a filmmaker build an audience uh, for their project on the Facebook? Like what's the first thing, like what should they start doing? Well, there's the, there's the two, there's the, there's two ways to approach it. It's Mm -hmm. if you're starting completely from scratch for yourself and for, you know, maybe your first movie, um, then, then that's a lot of that initial stuff. Like say the movie hasn't even been made yet, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just going to come from, um, just being you posting things you find interesting, trying to gather people that, 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 uh, are, are liking the things that you like, you know, if you have to do a targeted, my, my suggestion would not be to do a targeted spend to try and grow a base for yourself before you have a, any to show for it. That would be so, can you imagine? (laughs) 
Well, and that's the thing, right? It's like, hey, look at me over here. I have no movie to show you, but I, you know, but I'm I, really cool, and I think you'll yeah, like me. But it, I have no content. Work. Yeah, the best place to start, honestly, is to actually have a piece of content, have something that, it, whether it's a movie or a short or a, you know whatever. That's where a lot of people are building their audiences, period, whether it's on Facebook or anything. You know, you have to have something to show for yourself. So if you have a movie, though, you know, it starts uh, it starts with the trailer, you know, having an amazing uh, trailer. But, you know, as I don't know if yeah, I linked you to that one article I, I wrote, mm-hmm. um, you know, discussing, uh, you know, when I say good trailer, I mean a trailer that is specifically – you, you thought it through as something that's going to have to be advertised, you know, not um, you, you sat and cut a trailer for your own movie and you, and you think it's amazing, but it's three minutes long and nobody's going to finish it no matter how high you are on your own, you know, your own thing. Would you agree? Would you agree that, and this is a big pet peeve of mine since I am an editor, uh, you should hire a trailer editor or someone who has trailer experience it's like what some of the best money you can spend in your marketing um, budget. I, I think it's it's going to depend on the person. You okay. know, it's like I've cut I've cut plenty of other folks' trailers and I've cut my own. But, but you if have experience. You don't have the objectivity though, right? Uh, that's, that's the that's... difference. That's why a lot of people suggest don't cut your own because a lot of people can't step back mm-hmm. and they can't. You know, just like it's hard to cut out a scene that you know mm-hmm. in the story for, but you love it. I will cut that thing all day long. You know, uh, I'll get rid of it immediately. Like I, I'm, I'm very ruthless with myself, or I try to be. So, so when it comes to cutting a trailer, I know that that if they don't watch the actual movie, the movie makes no money. I'm never going to get to make another one. So, you know, sitting down and being able to look at your movie, not as the filmmaker now, but as somebody who who wants to make more movies later, how do I cut this to for viewer retention so it's the best thing it can be, where it doesn't give everything away, but is going to uh, be attractive quickly to the folks that it's made for? Mm-hmm. Like these the trailer editors, like I know, I know a friend that works at Mark Woolen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he just won a Clio the, like the other day. Um, he's great and he's cut amazing, amazing stuff. But but a lot of the like trailer houses and people that cut trailers period Mm -hmm. um are not cutting them for the environment that i'm talking about they're cutting them for um and that's not to say that they're not amazing of course they are but they're they're amazing within the context that they were made for which is like theatrical Theatrical. trailers yeah they're made to be seen in an environment where someone is basically intending to finish it right like they're in a theater with their popcorn unless they're going to the bathroom they're going to watch the whole thing whether they want to or not unless they're kind of looking at their phone Mm -hmm. so when 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 you're putting your movie out there as an indie filmmaker and you're you have a budget that you've kind of set to push your trailer to a specific group of people mm-hmm. you are you are not in that environment that trailer is showing up in a space where all it takes is a flick of their thumb and you don't exist to them anymore right. so you know you have to look at your trailer from that standpoint you you have literally a few seconds to get a, to get someone's attention you know how do you um how do you let that person know that, hey, this might be something you're interested in. And that's where it steps out of, it steps into this this weird zone of being artistic, but very, you know, uh, data conscious and just kind of objective at the same time. It's like, there are, there are artsy trailers that are incredible in their own right, um, that work in an environment outside of the internet, or at least outside of an advertising space, you know, like showing up in your newsfeed where it's going to autoplay. And if all they see is a logo or the shot of a field with no context, you could, I could cut you 10 identical trailers for 10 different movies that all start with the, with the same first 10 seconds, whether that's logos or whatever, Oh yeah, you know, and I could push it out to 10 different audience groups. None of those people, unless they watch past that point would know the movie is that particular kind or genre or anything. Yeah. So, you know, and you're paying for the first three seconds, you know, so it shouldn't be your logo. No, no. Everybody's <laughs> hyped up on their logo. See, that's where the brand part, you kind of like have to take, like, get, take that part away for a second. Unless your brand is so big that that's why someone's going to stop scrolling. You right. got to get rid of that thing because, you know, it, or if you have a, 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 you know, your biggest actor, you know, people love to see faces. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the thing that either shows them? Um, the tone right away where they're either in or they're out, at least on that level, 
or or if you have a huge draw like a particular actor um or um or maybe it is attached to a huge brand that that has its own you know its own pull in a way but like a20 like a24 does like if you like see an a24, a24 says and even in that case right a24 says hey legit movie right to it to a certain number of people sure but people see ads all day so that's not necessarily going to get anybody to really stop. Not if you're targeting, uh, like if you're just targeting people who just love movies, who are like cinephiles, mm-hmm. like that's not really a target. You know, that's, that sounds like a target, that's but it's too not broad. Really it's too broad. Yeah, it's too broad. Um, well, let's talk about, let's talk about audience because it's something that filmmakers, uh, in my experience, just don't get. They don't understand that you have to understand who your customer is, who your audience is for your product, for your movie. Sure. So can you talk sure. a little bit about audience and then how you find these audiences on Facebook? Yeah. Um, you know, your audience is not 35 plus men, you know, like that's not an audience. <laughs> that's like, Warner that, Brothers audience. That's how they yeah, can afford to you grow know, that. You're, you're talking about a hundred million, you know, 150, like it just, that's not an audience. So, so, um, you know, and I believe in in going as deep into the targeting as you can because, uh, again, that objectivity, far less people, and I have to be careful how I say this, but it's just true. Far less people are interested in your movie than you want to think, oh, right? Absolutely. Far less people are going to like it than you want to believe, mm-hmm. uh, and far less people are going to buy it than you think. Mm-hmm. So, who are the most likely? to like it and buy it. You know, what is their particular leaning as a, as a person? And what is it about what your movie communicates specifically though, the trailer, right? Cause mm-hmm. perception for them is going to be reality. Mm-hmm. Whatever you put in that 60 or 90 seconds is all they know at this point. Mm-hmm. So you can make a horror movie. You've seen the, those funny trailers where people make a horror movie look like a family, you know, <laughs> yeah. right. or, or they make a, you know, a, um, Christmas okay. vacation look like a horror film. Yeah, they're great. You know, it's it's amazing how uh, the big difference that that can make. So, you know, when it comes to your audience, sometimes and more often uh, than than uh, than I'd care to admit, like the targets are not obvious uh, a lot of the time. Um, sometimes it's a lot easier, and I think as I've done this longer, I've gotten better at it. But um, when I look at uh, would be like an example, you know, an easy target or an easier target would be something like an Asperger's right. R Us. There's sure. clearly a community that's targetable, who's very underserved, and and that meant that the trailer, which we did change at the very front, right, because we needed to suck them in, mm-hmm. um, needed to let them know quick that it was about a topic they understand. Um, so it was literally going after the organizations that are targetable, the the different groups, right, anything that was very specific to that organization or I'm sorry, not organization that, uh, that community of people. So that one was more straightforward. Mm-hmm. And then it's more about does the content effectively communicate really fast so that we get them in, right. Uh, that this is for them. So like but something that, like Hacksaw Ridge, which is obviously a big movie. Um, did you do any specific targeting or did you just kind of go, cause you had the, the budget was much bigger that you could kind of go more broad. Right. And on that one, on that one, I was, I wasn't actually running the advertising on that one. I was helping with other things, but I can tell you though, if somebody handed me that movie and just said, "Ah, here's my budget and we want to push, you know, the trailer, you know, um, say the, the trailer that was being pushed was, was pushing more towards, uh, communicating more of the, the faith of the main guy in the movie. You know, I don't know if you've seen the movie, Sure, sure. Um, but like say the trailer was kind of more biased towards that. Well, then it would be okay. You know, for a movie that big that has big stars in it and whatever, you're not really as concerned about making it feel legitimate. Everybody knows, oh, I've they've probably heard of it before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very high budget, you know, all that sort of stuff. So you just look at a lot of like you, uh, what's the best way to explain this? Like you start with a a bigger target that is the broad one, but then you start to overlay new pieces mm-hmm. to hone it in. So people that are going to be fans of the biggest targets that are clearly attached to the movie. And then how do we go in, uh, in that big pool and find the smaller pool within the big pool that, that are more likely to, to like what we're giving. And if you, and if you can go in even further than that, right. Overlay a third layer of people. Um, so it might be, uh, fans of huge Mel Gibson movies, uh, war movies of every kind, right? This Mm -hmm. huge target in the millions and millions and millions. Um, You might not even segment it by age or gender. You just go as big as you can. Mm -hmm. And then you start to overlay, in this case, like faith targets, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
pastors uh movies that are that are faithy in their kind of you know in their message or whatever um uh other pages that are have a religious affiliation and you start to overlay that stuff uh in the case of anything that that of that sort that might mean putting in uh more political leanings right to try and maybe weed out folks that are going to be interested in the movie but in the case of that p- particular trailer might be more they might identify a little bit more with the the messaging in there mm-hmm. you know so that that that's like a simple example of of what that can look like um i just did a a launch for a um a indie comedy coming to digital and i had to go like four layers deep and test out different mixtures uh, cause I knew this is going to be super specific. It's a broad comedy, but then it has a main character that is a much older Oscar winning actress. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so it's, and it deals with kind of, um, subject matter of when people are getting old and, and them being taken care of by family. And so it swings between the broader comedy and has this kind of sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so how do you, tar- I, so how do you target a movie? Cause that's, I mean, that's uh, something like Asperger's or us. It's, 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 it's fairly straightforward and fairly simple, sure. but when you're talking about a, a broad comedy, like how mm-hmm. does a broad comedy with an indie film, how do you target that? Like, do you go after right. specific actors? Do you go after like, depending on, the angle of the broad comedy or is let's, you know, like you said, yeah, like, yeah. how do yeah. you, how do you do it? Yeah. The, I mean, uh, and, and honestly, I think a lot of folks that are probably listening that are in making indie movies, like to be quite honest, a lot of our movies are the, some of the hardest ones to target, sure. right? Cause they don't have the huge actors with the massive targetable, you know, audiences that sure. know their face immediately. So, you know, for this movie, I created, you know, four different segments. It was, um, you know, very broad comedy, which included, uh, you know, all the kind of normal ones you would think of, you know, broad, broad comedies of every sort, Will Ferrell movies, the hangover movies, everything, just mm-hmm. throw it all in a big group. Right. And then I did a totally separate co- uh, category of comedies, but ones with heart, mm-hmm. right. Movies that are funny, but have a particular um, sweetness to them. And there were movies like the descendants in there or, uh, and some of these might have drama mixtures too, but you know what I mean? Um, so, you, so, separate- so you start, tar- so you start targeting, of mo- people's likes as far as movies that they like movies that are close to the movie that you have. Right. Right. So I made a segment of broad comedy and then a, a kind of a tighter group of movies that are, have more of the sweetness as opposed to the raunchiness. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I created because of the older leaning of mm-hmm. the movie, mm-hmm. even though it has younger guys in it that are like the grandsons and stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Remember, um, I created another group of, of movies that were specifically about getting old, right? So cocoon, right? Great Out movie. to sea, you know, that, <laughs> all the, uh, Amour, uh, yes. all the, all the films that are kind of about those subjects. Mm-hmm. And then I created a fourth one, which was particularly, um, older audience. So ARP, right? Retirement. Sure. Um, Facebook has data on who is likely to be grandparents. Um, people that have retired as their actual job title in their profile, right? Like all these sort of things are, are possible to target. So then within, so you created four different campaigns based on these groups or did you put them no, all in four, one group? Uh, four different audience groups. And then I created multiple ad sets that mixed those in various capacities in order to find out, you know, what the best mixture was. Right. You got to do, you got to te- basically test marketing. Yes, exactly. You know, but I, but the, the best way, and it, it kind of sounds scary to folks that don't have a lot of money to spend, but truthfully, it's about spending a little bit of money on a lot of different mixtures. And you have to kind of sit there and look at the data as it starts to run and optimize and find out, okay, which, which rabbit hole do I go down? Right. Where the, right. where the engagement and the cost per completed view, like at the 95% mark, um, is the highest. That's what I look for. So yeah, can yeah. you can you talk a little bit about um, cost per click, uh, CP, you know, CPC, CPMs, and what's a good target range for like you know for an action? So if you you know for a click, how much should you be get it down to per cost? Obviously, the lowest is possible, but what's sure, sure. what's the average for action? And and for people- and a lot of and a lot of that stuff's going to be. You know, that's going to be in like the retargeting phase, mm-hmm. which for a typical movie is going to come after you've launched the trailer and put as much as you're able to put on that. Mm-hmm. You know, you build up your bucket of people who have watched it to the 75 or 95 percent mark and then hit them back with a different ad unit that then advertises the release or whatever. Right. And that's where you get into more of the cost per click and stuff. Um, you know, those numbers 
to be honest, can be all over the place. Oh, it, there's so many factors there. Um, you know, if you're if you're paying any more than if you're paying any more than fifty, you know, cents per click. I mean, you, yeah, you really want to you, you want to. Well, that hurt. That hurt me. Oh. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'm talking specifically though about like a movie, not like trying to push an article or a push a. You know, there's so many. There's a whole gamut. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know. Uh, so so don't take that number and put it. I guess in a as some sort of rule. I mean, if you're if you're trying to kind of retarget and send people like in a theatrical movies case to a ticketing page mm-hmm. after they finish the trailer, um, and it's costing more than that, then like there might be something off in that case, you know? Well, that's a, um, and, and that's also basically customer acquisition cost. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which though, the, the, the more, the, the more specific the intent you're going for, the higher the costs are going to be anyway. And also you the know? market you're going for. So if you market yeah, in the U S it's a lot different the than time of year, right? Yeah. Like we're coming up, you know, at least when we're recording this, you're coming up on kind of the end of a year and all the inventory is going to get crowded because it's the holidays. Sure. Right. It, so all a, the costs are going to go up everywhere simply because more people are dumping money in the last two months of the year. So, um, so competition you know. is going to be a, a lot more fierce. Yeah, yeah, you know, and some specific that I've kind of learned over the over the years of running stuff for movies in particular is that everybody kind of gets obsessed with with cost per clicks and CPMs when uh, and CPMs I guess is more applicable to what I'm about to say. But like for a movie, if someone has finished the trailer. They really don't need to click through to somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. They only need to know again and be reminded many, you know, possibly multiple times, but either way, they need to see an ad unit that communicates back, hey, that thing you watched, it's out, or hey, that thing you watched, it's over there. They don't need to click through as the gateway to get there because everybody has an Apple TV or a Roku. So they simply need to be reminded that, hey, that thing you, you, you liked, um, it's, it's over there. So them clicking through isn't really the gateway to the sale a lot of the time, you know, right. um, that's, that's my personal opinion. Um, they don't need to click through in order to rent it. And odds are, if they're going throughout their day, they're probably not renting it right there from their phone to go and watch later. They're going to go and look it up later. You know, oh, that movie's out. Of course, you know, it's Friday night, whatever. And they're going to go check it out. Can we talk a little bit about content and, sure. and how important uh, content creation is for a project, for um, for anything in regards to anything online and specifically on Facebook. It's so huge. It's, it's so huge. And because, I mean, this is what I do on a daily basis with Indie Film Hustle. I, I, I output an immense amount of content. Right. Uh, as yeah. you as you know, I'm sure you've, you've looked me up. Uh, you've got, you got a million episodes on a million things and blog posts. It's crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, so I pump up a lot of content that's valuable. It's not just garbage. Mm-hmm. It's valuable stuff to mm-hmm. my audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's how I'm able to build up uh, my audience and build up what I've been able to build up. But when, when it comes to a film, when I released my movie, This Is Meg, I created mm-hmm. I created not just um, the trailer, which was, as you said, the lead, the lead generator. That's the right. that's. That's the big boy. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a poster, but that really didn't do a whole lot. I didn't do really focus. And, but then I created behind the scene segments. Um, sometimes I made funny interviews. We actually shot specific content of one of our main characters who was, you know, supposed to be a guru. Uh, and he was spouting out like the most ridiculous wisdom you could ever think of. Sure. Um, things like that. But it was all about brand and about getting this out. And then once the movie was released, I released short scenes. Per right. actor or per actress, right. uh, mm-hmm. and targeting those specific groups. So mm-hmm. that was a lot of content that I created for just my movie. What do you suggest for filmmakers when they're creating, you know, getting content creation for, uh, for their projects? Um, kind of just like any, you know, like <laughs> the indie film hustle, not the, the name of the podcast, but just the hustle as it is as an indie filmmaker, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. um, I suggest making, all the quality content that you can, Mm -hmm. but if I had to pick, you know, it it would come down to, um, you know, things that are more personable like that, you know, scenes are great, but like not a bunch of them pick like the very, very best that are going to be most attractive to, to who, who's going to like the movie, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, memes still have value, right? Like they still work. They They still still have a certain amount of value. They still do. Uh, Yeah. You know, so, so, so doing that, 
uh, with with like endorsements if you have any quotes from the movie that are the most potent, mm-hmm. uh, you know that sort of thing. Uh, countdown, you know, memes can be helpful, uh, you know, and then creating a really, really, really good um, short spot. You know, uh, if you're going to actually do some of what I'm talking about and retarget people that you've hit that have like visited your website, for instance, mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, which I never mentioned, like the Facebook Pixel and being able to put that on a website. But what is the uh, face? No, I don't know about Facebook Pixel. What is that? Uh, Facebook Pixel is a tracking pixel, just like when you put on Google onto your site. You know, it it allows Facebook to track, just like Google would. You know, visitors and what pages, and you can set up, you know, conversions to to send people to specific pages and track those things. You know, um, but within the 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 you know context of Facebook users, you know, so which is um, everybody, <laughs> we, right? But like, it's only going to track the folks that actually visit. So, like on a on a theatrical movie, mm-hmm. the very last hail mary part of what I might do is hit everybody that visited a ticketing page uh, with last minute ads on like that Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I can only do that because the pixel's there and it knows who visited that specific page or who visited the site in general. You see, uh, that's some ninja stuff right there. But, <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's, it just, you just gotta have to kind of, you have to just look into it and do it and set it up and make sure you do it the best way you can and do it early because Facebook's going to start gathering data as soon as you install that thing mm-hmm. and make sure it's firing. It'll start putting a, an audience for you together just based on who's loading your website. Um, that's pretty massive. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And, and, uh, and because, um, if you have, if you have an ad account that you, that someone has set up, um, and you set yourself up as a, uh, as an agency, as opposed to an individual, you like, it's basically just a button for now that could change. It's one of those things where I'm hoping Facebook doesn't, you know, change something that's going to make this harder for people, but you know, you can start to plug in custom audiences like that based on, video viewers or, or visitors or whatever, and see a demographic makeup of, of the, of those groups, age groups, you know, what are, what pages do they like the most? Um, Facebook has data on, uh, (laughs) on everything, you know, income level for goodness sake, you know, estimates and stuff. It's not, but is, but is this, um, that's if you are an agency or if you're a person, if you set up your, if you set up an ad account as an agency, I believe that's the only way the audience insights panel will actually show up for you. I didn't have it either until I switched over and, and gra- you know, was able to get access to that specifically. Fairly easy to do that. Yeah, yeah, in your in your like settings um, for for your ad account, but um, okay. And it might even it might even be there already. You just haven't noticed the button or something. You know, you never okay. know. Got but uh, but but uh, when you were talking about content, you know the. Uh, a lot of the times what I'll see is people will spread themselves too thin, for instance, Mm -hmm. you know, they'll make, they'll make so much stuff, but they'll have not put together a way to to put it out to enough people for it to really matter for them. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, some movies would be better off quite honest of, of, um, having two to three and that's it, but they concentrate all of their focus on, on, you know, the trailer in the big, in the biggest sense. And then, two amazing concentrated pieces of content to follow after for a lot of people that's about as much as they're going to be able to afford and be effective right for other folks that have um an audience base already or have a lot of other avenues to like push or put stuff out organically make all the stuff you can um because it it can be helpful you know if you have just one actor with a great twitter following and you made something specific to them right um that can be really valuable for you you know outside of facebook there's there's all sorts of things that can be done um but the content really has to be i think today more than more than anything short concise very quick to communicate what it is you want people to know. Mm -hmm. I know everybody thinks that this is just making everyone's attention span shorter, but truthfully who in the world has time to watch your 10 minute behind the scenes thing? You know, how many people are going to actually finish it? Um, it, It's, it's not, it's not likely. Uh, This is, and this, uh, trust me, this is, I know this because I have a lot of content that runs an hour or runs two hours and I sure. see, and I see that I see the um, the numbers come back, and I, I know exactly how long they stay, right? Uh, you know, and and I know exactly it's it's, it's you're right, you know, and especially on a feed, there's certain mm-hmm. arenas like YouTube that you know a channel that people subscribe to, or right. or true fans that are really into whatever you're doing. Um, right. But this is a whole other conversation. Um, sure. Now, can and just to mention, because uh, I know you asked me about any, you know, there's 
just to make a quick comment about other stuff outside of Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, cause I, cause I have been involved and have understanding about the other platforms, you know, and, uh, is, you know, advertising on Twitter, extremely difficult. Yes. And one of the, one of the lowest ROIs that oh, I've seen personally. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, That's, horrible. That's why they're not doing well. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not great for it's not great for people that don't have a lot of money to spend. You know, YouTube is very similar. It's actually really good um, at, at at what it does when you advertise through Google and YouTube if you do it well. But you do need a lot of money to be effective. You know, it seems that the more money you spend on on YouTube, the better results you actually get. Where Facebook's almost the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can do really well with a lot of money on Facebook. Um, I've done it, but if you only have so much money and you need to, you need to purposefully, like you said, the drip, mm -hmm. you know, um, Facebook is the absolute best ROI you're going to get in terms of like measurable human attention per dollar. It's just unbeatable. So that's, that's why I kind of tell folks, if you only have a certain amount of money to spend, please, 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 you know, look over here. Cause it's, it's the best you can get. Now, how many times does a customer need to be exposed to your message before they take action? And <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous and make me sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. But sure. truthfully, no one has no idea. No one has any idea. I know. Nobody has any idea. Like that <laughs> whole idea, nobody knows anything. Like yeah. my, my, my hope and like dream for everyone, not just me because I, I'm involved in advertising like as a day-to-day -day sort of deal, mm -hmm. is uh, conversion tracking really true conversion tracking through to the digital platforms. Nobody offers it. Mm -hmm. You know, iTunes is just a closed system and, nice. and it's just kind of the way that it is. Uh, Amazon's no different. Uh, nobody really provides you a way to track a digital sale all the way through the funnel that mm -hmm. you brought people through. Unless you've created uh, the end, unless you create the end area, but the big, the big platforms, they don't allow you to. Correct. Like VHX. Yes. Yes. You know, but, but again, how many people, how many people actually that you're going to get to are comfortable using it? Have any idea what that is? Vimeo, right? even Vimeo video yep. is, is, as yep. well. Same thing. It's, it's getting on those big platforms that where people feel comfortable, have their number. Like everyone's got their stuff on Amazon already. Of course. Right. Yeah. Because everyone just, and even if someone doesn't intend to buy it over there, a lot of people just go there to check, you know, what the pricing is or whatever. So mm -hmm. where I, my, my opinion, if you're putting a movie out digitally, which like I just had something come out that didn't do this because we actually couldn't afford it. It's just like a DIY lo-fi thing made with some friends, not like a mm -hmm. normal release, right? Mm -hmm. um, put it in as many places as you can afford that are the major ones because people are going to initially go look where they're most comfortable, right? So if that means Amazon, they're going to head over to Amazon. If that means – like I'm, a, I'm an iTunes person, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have an Apple TV, not a Roku. So if it's not on iTunes – it's it's way less likely that I'm going to end up watching it, right? Uh, well, like for me, I would, since we just released Meg on on all the major platforms, you know, Fandango mm -hmm. and Google Play and everybody, yeah, everywhere, uh, yeah. everywhere I released it. What I've realized is that I honestly only needed to release it in two places, um, mm -hmm. which is Amazon and iTunes, because those that are the biggest, yeah, those are the two big Google Play, sure, but generally speaking. If you're on Google Play, you probably will buy on Amazon and iTunes. But those two markets are very different because I was I just got an Apple TV a yep. little bit ago. And mm -hmm. before then I was on Amazon only. So I would only buy things on Amazon, but now I'm on Apple TV. So now I've switched over to buy and rent stuff on Apple TV and not on Amazon. So it's either one of those two right. um, for releases. That's just my experience. I mean, obviously Hulu and Netflix, that's all other conversations, but for TVOD okay. transactional video on demand, those are the platforms that I found that right. work the best. Now that that's something that's interesting actually too is and, and you're not you're not wrong about that with the the fact that they're they're clearly the big dogs, right? Sure. So you have to when you when you're going to pay money to an aggregator or whoever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to, to place your movie, you wanna make sure or at least think about how how big that's the object that's the objectiveness that I was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. How big are my sales likely to be? And do I want to pay, you know, that extra amount to get placed in a spot where I might not break even or I, you know, it's, that's, that's certainly a part of the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so, so yeah, um, something that I wanted to mention, I don't know, uh, I didn't have a clock about how long it's been. No, uh, no, don't worry. No, no, no worry. Okay, good. We good on time? All right. Oh no, we're, dude, uh, don't worry. We, we could talk for another hour. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll just... talk as long as you want to talk. Okay. Uh, 
the the uh, something that I, when I was talking about audiences and about kind of mixing the different audiences together, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the way it works on Facebook is they'll let you put in all the targeting you want, but oh, then yeah. they allow you to either narrow or exclude, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. audience groups. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I said, you know, I have audience A of broad comedy, I'll put that in. And then I'll say, but they also have to match audience B. So it's not adding A and B together in one pile, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's everyone who likes these broader comedies, but also likes the ones with heart. They have to like both, and also uh, like the also like cocoon. Yeah, also yeah. Like yeah. So yeah. so all the mixtures are 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 you know either adding some of the groups together, and then they also have to match. You know, so A and B together in a pile, but also have to like audience D, or it's they have to like A and also like B and also like C very different things. Right. Uh, it's, it, it's, I know it sounds very nerdy and, and whatever, but if I, if, if you had like little circles in front of you mm-hmm. and you started overlaying them on top of one another, you could start to see, Oh, if I mix it this way, it's this many people, right? right. If I mix it this way, it's this many. Um, so, so that's, that's the sort of stuff before you would ever segment out ages and genders. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, which totally takes it to a different level. You know, if you're only trying to get to people of this age or more or, or whatever, um, it goes it goes even more. But, you know, if someone was sitting down, the best way to explain to somebody who's going to sit down and try and do this, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they had $1,000, like you said, right? You know, and they don't want it to just disappear. <laughs> right. um, and if you have your trailer and say you come up with the at least the best targeting you can come up with and, you know, as best you're able, you know, you test out something. Uh, if you have $1,000, then maybe test out three different audience mixtures at on, on launch day and, uh, and put, you know, 50, uh, $50 on each one or $25 on each one. And you're going to have to let it run. You're going to have to spend, you know, probably 10%, 15% of your money in order to let the ad optimize enough, which means Facebook's learning out of this big group you fed me, who's responding best. Mm-hmm. It's going to start shoving things over to that, because Facebook, Facebook wants you to succeed. They well, here's the thing. And when people say, "Oh, that sounds ridiculous," no, the the less efficient their ads run, the less money they're going to make because um, the the competition that's constantly happening between ads, mm-hmm. like they don't they don't want to display something just a bunch of times for the wrong amount of money. That sounds like counterintuitive. Like, of course, they would want to just light your money on fire and walk, mm-hmm. but but the, it's in their best interest that you spend more money as you get great results. Right. Cause if you start seeing action and you're going to go, Oh, I need to put more money in and you'll, yeah, spend, you'll spend, you'll like spend a crack like addict, dollars, like a crack right? addict. You'll go out there and get your money and start pumping it in. If you see. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as that stuff rolls out, they're trying to find, you know, and I've, and, and, uh, uh, the company that I, I work for in my like nine to five, you know, we have like Facebook reps that we talk to and, you know, find out when stuff's going to shift, you know, before it kind of, surprises us and Mm -hmm. and there have been times when they uh this is an interesting thing that i'll give people a little bit of a of an idea um you know facebook doesn't just deliver on facebook right they deliver to instagram and it delivers to um audience network you know which is kind of their proprietary delivery device to put ads from their from their ad platform elsewhere on the internet kind of like their google ads yeah, yeah. So it'll, it, you know, you'll you'll see an ad that you're running on uh, from Facebook will show up in between, you know, a video on CNN or, or you know, CNN.com or something like that. Um, or they have in-stream ads that will can show up on your Apple TV now, you know. Um, and so, so yeah. they they have reached far and beyond, you know, the just the Facebook platform. Um, personal opinion after running a lot of stuff at smaller spends would be focus it on Facebook. You know, um, as of now, whatever day this airs, whenever you're listening to it, you know, I know things change all the time, but like focusing in on, on, um, Facebook placement is just the best, the best way to go. A lot of people are viewing things on mobile as opposed to desktop. Now mobile video is kind of the majority of, Mm -hmm. of, you know, video consumed, Mm -hmm. um, you know, going mobile only sometimes is worth a try. Um, you know, there, there are other principles like, um, uh, you know, captioning your video is an absolute must. You, you just please do not put it out there without the caption file attached because in this will dry, I, I can, I can hear from the future, lots of filmmakers screaming from their desktop right now, but, um, mm-hmm. 
30 to 60 percent uh, on average okay. of like trailer views are done in a sound off environment, completed yes. ones. And that will drive people nuts because they worked all this time making it sound good. And music spend, and spending money. Yeah. Oh God. But here's the thing though, is that, that that's someone who's willing to watch your two minutes or 90 seconds while reading it. I mean, a lot more people do that and don't mind doing that than we want to believe. Well, yeah, know? because I, look, I do it all the time because sometimes yeah. you don't want the sound to play when you're in the middle of a meeting or you're, or you're, but, or you you're watch somewhere. it though. Yeah. But right? you want to watch it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so, and so just that, like, that stuff matters, you know, your costs are going to go up if you're not captioned, you know, you're, cause people are going to see it and go, Oh, there's, I can't, I don't know what's going And they're, even if they're interested, they might bail because they can't, they can't view it in the environment that they want to. If they want to click on it, the captions disappear and they can listen to it all they want. No. But, but most folks are actually going to finish it, um, in a quiet environment with their phone in portrait mode, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that makes so many people upset, but, but truthfully, it's just, is it more important that more people sit down and consume the movie, you know, the mm-hmm. whole 90 minutes to two hours that you, that you poured over, is it more important that more people watch that or that they watch your trailer the way you want? And you know? and I'll, I'll just a real, cause I know closed captioning becomes a big beast for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a company that I use all the time. I'm not paid by them by any stretch of the imagination. But I just love their service so much. Is Rev.com? I'm sure you're. That's familiar. all we use. Rev.com. All I use the them. I use them not just for closed captioning my YouTube stuff and my Facebook stuff. I yeah. actually use them to closed caption the movie DVDs. And yeah. and, and I sent that file over to iTunes, which yeah. you know is a beast yeah. to go through yeah. the QC process. It, yeah. And when they approved it, I was like, "You're you're yeah, I'm with you forever." And it's yeah, it's so, great. It's a dollar a minute. As opposed it's to crazy. eight dollars a minute, what it used oh, to be. Oh man, I've paid so much money making DVDs and stuff in the past, where mm-hmm. I had to pay that much, and it was just like brutal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Rev. dot com is where to get it, and most trailers. I and mean, what it's going to cost you two dollars if that. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Cake. It's like you two know, three dollars uh, if that, right? Yeah, it's, it's nothing. It's a, it's you know, and Facebook will let you actually. It'll auto generate captions that you can then edit and time yourself right on their platform. Like it's if you want to go that route and save the few dollars, then fine, but. It's not necessary, you know, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, so captions are a huge deal in terms of ROI per dollar. Um, and then the thing I didn't put in that article I wrote because I, I honestly just expected to get mur- to just get murdered mm-hmm. um, was uh, was square optimization for Facebook only, you know, which what that, does that mean makes exactly square square optimizing your trailer. So you know? oh, um, the square optim yes, changing which, the which, aspect ratio. And here's the thing. I'm not saying you have. A lot of stuff that if it's square and it's on Facebook, can, it will mean more views per dollar. Can That's you say all that? I'm saying. If can someone say wants one, to say. Can you say that one more time? You dropped off for a second. <laughs> square. Oh, sorry. Uh, square video. If you're launching a trailer on Facebook or just any video in general, it is going to mean more views per dollar. That is the reality. If this, someone doesn't want to do it, that's totally fine. I just want folks to understand there will be ROI consequences for putting out, you know, the trailer quote the normal way, mm-hmm. um, simply because of the viewing environment. That's really the big thing. The viewing environment is huge. Now, when you when I did a tra- when I did the trailer, I released it both ways. I did it standard, like sixteen by nine, and mm-hmm. then I actually created a a graphic one that actually had like you know, a top bar and a bottom bar. So it was like letterbox, but I had graphics at the top and the bottom and mm-hmm. squared it out that way. So the image, the video was still playing at 16 by nine or a little bit bigger, let's right. say. Uh, yeah. But then I still had this, this, so it was more eye catching. Is that, is that a good uh, strategy there, as well? That That's another possibility. You know, there, there, I, I mean, I've tried every way you can imagine, including, you know, this is something that even I don't like, you know, unless I was told to do it, I don't tend to do it. But there are ones now you can run full mobile, like height wise, which. Oh, you know, God. If somebody and here's the thing, if somebody like I wouldn't want to do that with my own. I'm fine with Square, though. Like mm-hmm. if it if it's if I had a new movie coming out, you know, um, but like if you go and look up the Beatrice at dinner trailer on Facebook, mm-hmm. um, go look at the comments. Uh, there are some people that absolutely hated that it showed up in that format, mm-hmm. but the large majority of people, what are they saying? This looks great. I love John Lithgow. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you're the, the, the purpose of 
what you're trying to do, especially if you're an indie filmmaker where every dollar counts and every eyeball matters. Mm -hmm. Every iTunes rental is another step towards you getting to make another piece of content. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's, it's worth, it's just worth thinking about, you know, if your instant gut reaction is, you know, I'm, I'm turning off this podcast right now because this guy is an idiot and he's trying to destroy my art. That is not <laughs> you know, what, I'm, what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that there, there is a viewing environment to consider when you're advertising, at least on this platform, right? Right. Um, so if you shoot your movie in, in like an anamorphic format, mm-hmm. um, and honest, and here's the thing, I love the anamorphic format. Oh, I, have, I, I have a plasma that I refuse to get rid of because of the deep blacks and how beautiful the colors are on it sure, until sure. it dies getting rid of it sure. you know anamorphic two two four oh yeah so yeah i mean it's it it's gorgeous right uh but if you're trying to push a trailer like that on facebook through the news feed you're at the biggest disadvantage there is because you're so small um, it's, so, it's so tiny like lawrence you know? of arabia i mean seriously yeah <laughs> it is it's super super small so even on the bigger phones now where I feel like I have an iPad in my hand, not a, not a phone, you know, um, it still looks so tiny. So if someone isn't willing to even like consider the, the, which the two most important parts in my opinion of a, of a trailer are actually not the middle, at least from an advertising standpoint, Mm -hmm. you know, it's the beginning and it's the ending and the middle is how they kind of get there. So it's super important still. Mm -hmm. But if you don't communicate within a few seconds, kind of what you're, what, whether or not it's for this person or that person, um, you can't get them in. Forget about holding them. You can't even get them in. Uh, and then at the end, um, if you don't quickly wrap up and, you, and, you know, and you're like, no, I want to see all my logos and I want to slow fade with the mood and the voiceover and I want you know the, the title to show up for it's eight it, seconds. It's, different, then, it's a different word. You gotta, it's, a different, oh, it's a different piece of content for a different it, audience. It is. It is. It's, it's, you know what? Launch that on YouTube. Put the one that you, you know, put yeah. that one on YouTube, right? Um, but but for for Facebook in particular, to get that best ROI, you want to get in and you want to get out. Uh, now, one other thing I wanted to ask you in regards to video on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people do this. They'll put it up on YouTube, grab the link, throw it on, on Facebook and promote yeah. that. Mm-hmm. that's not a good idea, correct? No, it's a horrible idea. Right. Um, it is it, uh, something that I know there's probably a lot of folks listening that, that are thinking this way is they're really con, uh, con, uh, concerned about having all their views in one place. Mm-hmm. You know, they right. just want that number to be huge. When what I was trying to say earlier is the number that really matters is not the number that's public. I know that drives folks nuts, but it's the data behind the scenes that really is the most valuable. Mm-hmm. You know, you can have a million vanity numbers all you want, right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, uh, as an example of what's changed just recently, it seems uh, if you put a YouTube link into Facebook and post it, the play button's not even there anymore. It isn't. Yeah. No, it is not. I, and I do post it because I do get some traffic from it. Sure. But I'm just kind of tossing it. I'm not boasting it. It's organic and whatever I but get. But it's not I get. embeddable anymore. They no, took away the embeddable nature of even a YouTube video on Facebook, which if that makes someone angry, I totally understand. But they always treated it in the past, not quite as bad as they do now, but they always treated it basically the way a, a normal link is treated, right? It's an offsite. Mm -hmm. sort of deal it would get that kind of organic distribution in the past anyway Mm -hmm. you know um the best way to put to to get views from a facebook user is to put the video on facebook whether you have money on it or not way more people are going to see it that way yeah Uh, um so that that's a huge you know that's i I hadn't thought about bringing that up so i'm glad you brought that up uh it's just not going to get it's not going to get the kind of reach you want the one thing also I, i discovered is that when you post something on Facebook, if you have a link that takes you out of the platform, Facebook kind of penalizes you a little bit more. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit to the point where sure. uh, a friend of mine who's in the in the space, he's like, dude, why don't you just put up an image, just an image, a meme of some sort, no link and mm-hmm. watch your and watch how many uh, how much you get action you get off that. And mm-hmm. I did, and it I was like it was probably fifty fifty to eighty percent more uh views than mm-hmm. uh, the post I just did prior to that right, right. and it, so it and this part and same thing with a, a, a Facebook video, 
you mm-hmm. put just a Facebook video with no link, you're going to get a lot more action. Is that true? Right. Yeah, no, it's true. That's why uh, when someone launches a trailer organically on their page and they intend to put ad spend on that as opposed to the trailer living as like an ad unit somewhere else, mm-hmm. um, try not to put a link in there. Now, that was the other thing I was going to say, and this is something that a, a little tip that I found, and, and please tell me if this works or not or how you do it, is if you put – let's say you put one video up, right? Mm-hmm. You constantly boost that video. So you get all of that kind of social – um, currency because all those likes and all of those r- shares and all of that kind of stuff. So you keep pumping your money into that that's been organically posted on your page originally, but you keep boosting that specific video that way. Uh, it does give you a little bit more gravitas when you're on – because if you see something that has a million views – because you've been pumping it a lot. It gives you a little bit. I always look honest. I don't know why I do, but I always look at the views. When I see a video that I like, I mm-hmm. automatically go down the views. I'm like, Oh shoot that 23 million views. Right. Right. It's kind yeah, of like the, being part of the popular kids, popular. The, the, instead of, you know, if someone's going to launch the trailer for their movie on Facebook and they, they're doing all the stuff we're kind of talking about, mm-hmm. you know, launch it on the page as an organic post. And then when you go in to create the, the ad unit that you're going to push, mm-hmm. um, you know, put your page in so it knows I want to use this page and then you choose an existing post and that's the post that you select. So right. you can run an ad on the outside. You know, there's a big difference between running a video views ad that's optimized for views through an ad account and mm-hmm. boosting a post from your page. Okay. Um, those are two, it's still, it's still running basically as an ad, but two very different kind of ways of doing it, you know, um, which is more, I but, mean, so the running an ad, Use, with using an existing post is much more powerful than just boosting it? Yeah, because you, the, the the data that you can get and what you learn from it and what you can see and optimize for, it's all very different. Where a boosting of a post is simply going to, you know, you can select, do I want to hit more people that are just part of my page or, you know, go outside my friend or my uh, my likes a little bit. Or mm-hmm. you can put in some parameters, but it's it's the best way would be to run it from the ad account, choose the existing post you want to put, you know, the money on, and then you have a whole wealth of stuff that you can do and track over there. But the idea though of what you're saying is 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 true. If you're going to put a trailer out or, or put a video out and put ad spend on it repeatedly, um it is great uh, at least for like the centerpiece, like mm-hmm. a trailer to put it all on that organic thing because yes, an organic post that you then go and put ad spend on is going to get different organic distribution on top of the ad spend. Right. right? You want those shares. You want those. Yeah. The shares and, and something that Facebook didn't used to do um, that now it's a little bit easier is uh, they kind of in their database are going to pool a lot of the views together. So even if I set up a bunch of ad units of the same video within my like media uploaded library, Mm -hmm. um, the view ad, ad, ad unit to ad unit, even if they're pushed to totally separate targets are going to show me the, the, a a total view count, not each ad unit has a hundred thousand views over here and 50 over here. And, Mm -hmm. you know, um, the shares and comments and likes are all going to be separate, Mm -hmm. but the view count will look, the same for the whole. Um, and they also now break it down to the point where they show you how many three second views you got. Yeah. You can see over in your ad account. If you, if you launch your trailer organically, you don't put any links in the post copy, just the most concise, best info you can, Mm -hmm. you know, and you launch it that way. Um, it'll get organic distribution from your page and then the ad spend will push that and give you, you know, the residuals of that over time. But over in your ad account, you can see, um, three, you know, three second views, 10 second views, cost for both of those, the number of comments, likes, shares. It's insane. Know. It's insane. Yeah, the, it's, the it's so deep. yeah. The stuff that you can see, but the most important thing, you know, is measuring YouTube's no different. Like what does YouTube care about when you're talking about like how if it's an outside link, they kind of crush it a little bit. YouTube is all about keeping people on YouTube. So right. they want you, they, um, they want you to, and they tell you this when you go through kind of their like certification thing, they want people to get on YouTube and stay there as long as possible, no matter what they're watching. So mm-hmm. they, they just don't want you to leave. They don't care if you go from a movie trailer to a how to video to, you know, um, drunk in my kitchen, you know, they just, they just like, I don't know if you know what that, that yeah, show. I do. I do know that. Show. You know, like they don't care where you're flipping and flopping. They're trying to just keep you there. 
you know, watch time is the thing. So on Facebook, I don't really look at it as any different from an, as an advertiser standpoint. It's like, mm-hmm. how do I get this particular video to be finished? I mean, they're going to watch it to like the, the 95 mark by as many people as possible. And, uh, and how do I weigh that out also with whether or not there's shares and comments? Because sometimes when I test stuff, I'll get a lower cost per completed view, but the shares are like triple right. on another ad, ad, ad unit. Which one do you put more money towards? It's sometimes it's a toss up and you kind of have to make, make your best guess. Right. But, um, you know, the, uh, something I haven't mentioned is there's a holistic view to this. Mm-hmm. For any filmmakers that are out there that are launching lots, say they're launching lots of videos. Like in your case, you got a ton of content, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there, <laughs> This is a new term, I think, or a new, not a new term, but a new concept for the smaller indie indie filmmaker. But we think about building audiences as, as how big is my page, right? My Twitter followers, my this, my that. Um, there's this whole other category now, if you, if you dive into this stuff, which is you start building your own database behind the scenes of people that have consumed your content, even if they only watched half of it that that audience is there to retarget later. So if you're a filmmaker who makes a lot of short films, this is something I'm going to, I'm going to try the planets next year. Um, you know, put out a number of different short form pieces of content specifically on a platform like Facebook or even YouTube where you can track stuff. I want to build a bank of people who liked that content the most. How do you, how do you get at, how do you do that? Well, if I'm pushing it, if I put a little, if I come up with a budget that I'm planning to push each video with, mm-hmm. All of the people that watch your video to the three second, 10 second, 25, 50, 75, mm-hmm. 90, mm-hmm. they're all retargetable. You can make it, you can make a retargetable audience from people that consumed your content to a certain depth. Um, fa- that's right within in the, Facebook. That's all within, right within the ad account, right in the audience. Jesus. You know, thing you put in, you put in what video you want that, that you have access to that's yours mm-hmm. you know, and you select um, what, parameter you're looking for and name it and all that stuff. Make sure you don't get confused because you can have a big list there. You can imagine. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then it'll populate a list for you that you can then plug into an ad unit. All that other targeting I was talking about, there are some ad units like on a, on a, on a big campaign for a huge movie or even a small indie. Mm -hmm. um, It really becomes a two stage process. How many people for the money that I have, can I get to engage deeply with this piece of content, whether that's a trailer or whatever, um, and then how many times can I hit those people back with what kind of ad unit? And that means retargeting the viewers, right? So creating audiences of people that watched that trailer to 95% um, is literally my biggest focus sometimes on a campaign. How many good people can I get leads. to finish this trailer? Yeah, leads. Yeah, yeah. And then leads. create that retargetable audience of folks who are familiar now with the movie. And then on release week or something, say it's just a DVD or something coming out, I create an audience of those people, or I probably created it long ago because it'll kind of keep updating, mm-hmm. you know, the number grows. Um, when I go to advertise, that's the audience I put in. I don't put in all the other targets. I already, I went through that stage already. Right. I only want to go after the 100,000 or whoever that finished that trailer so I can remind them, hey, that thing you watched a month ago, it's out and here's where it is. Um, that's, that's available to basically anybody. Uh, so if you think about not just one movie, but multiple pieces of content, say it's not movies, right? Say it's like the show you've got, or, or, or someone does a short form series or anything, you know, there's a, there's a way to look at this as I'm building data for the long haul of this big group of people who are watching my stuff, um, who are liking what I've got. Now they might not like your page, right? A lot less people are liking pages now than they used to. That used to be the thing, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot less folks are willing to kind of like do that, but they're willing to engage with really good content again and again and again. So those numbers behind the scenes, those retargetables are like gold for anybody, big brands, little filmmakers, you know, local pizza business for goodness sake, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being able to retarget folks that engage with content on different levels, not just video, but other stuff and uh, people that visit your website. It's like there's, high value intent there on, on their end. Um, and they're able to be retargeted. It's no different than the way cookies work elsewhere on the internet. Right. 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 Exactly. Now real quick, I, want, I have one last question because we've been going for a while. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. You're good. Uh, um, what is the, please tell 
everybody the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group and how okay. powerful either of the, each of them are in, in their own yeah. way. A group is, is, is very specific. It's much more for, you know, smaller communities, you know, you can close it. Right. So it's like just for filmmakers in Nashville, or it's just for a, uh, I mean, there's one for my HOA, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So, so there, the groups are much more for, you know, very specific tight knit, you know, it's not necessarily for brands. It's much more for, but, uh, uh uh, what would be the right word? Can't think of the right word. But a page is much more for a branded piece of content, a person, a movie, a book, uh, a band, you know, a like Coca-Cola, you know, isn't no, going to have. A, um, is it but, true though, but is it true, though, that uh, that groups automatically go into um, some sort of feed or they that everybody in the group sees it much more than they would see organically in a page? Um. Honestly, I don't, I don't remember a group though is going to, is not the right way to go for what we're talking about simply because your advertising opportunities are just not there. No, no, exactly. This is a completely kind of side hustle. (laughs) Sure. I mean, you know what, this used to be, this used to be the way, like how I initially built, um, cause I'm not, I'm not making movies through this company anymore. You know, the, the, the company that I started, I built, uh, like a million fans on Facebook basically over time. Um, and I don't use, I don't, I don't use that anymore just because it's, it's not kind of where I'm creating art anymore. But the, before it was that it was the groups because that's, that was, they didn't even let you create pages back then. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So, so it, I, you know, I grew like a group up to 10,000 and that was where the limit was. And then I tried to migrate everybody over to a page and then I grew the page, but you know, groups are for more specific, things where you would kind of intend for it to exist within a box. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's, that's more how that, how that works in terms of the organic distribution. I'll be honest. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think, I think a lot of it though, from what I remember, because they, again, they change, they change stuff about their algorithm and push code all the, um, it still kind of works in, in a similar way. I think whether it's a personal profile post Mm -hmm. or a group or a Facebook page, the more engagement it gets faster, the more distribution it ends up getting. You know, that's why pages that have a million people in them, right? Mm-hmm. They have a much bigger sample size that Facebook initially puts out there to, to find out, mm-hmm. you know, what the engagement rate's going to be or, or to, to kind of deduce that. Mm-hmm. So naturally, of course, the page, the posts from those pages are probably going to go crazy compared to anything else. But, um, but I do notice whether it's a, a group post, a personal post, or a Facebook uh, page post, um, when you post and the amount of engagement you get and how quickly is is really the biggest thing. It doesn't work like Twitter does. It doesn't work like you know right. other you know it, it it's very different. Um, so the content is a big part of that. I've I've had a lot of um, trial and error uh, through through the years working with Indie Film Hustle and seeing content go up on Facebook and. I did notice like when I had I had one piece of content early on when I launched Indie Film Hustle that kind of really went viral to the point where it was reaching it probably reached, you know, 500,000 million. That's great. Uh, you know, it went crazy. It went crazy. Um and I that taught me a lot because I know where I posted it, I know how I did it. Um and then you start figuring out the psyche of the customer. You figure right. it out because of, of the, and when I say customer, someone who I want to consume my content. The idea of virality as a thing, you know, on the internet mm-hmm. has, has changed so much where mm-hmm. it, it doesn't really happen the way it used to anymore. And, the, and it doesn't happen as often. So no cat videos, uh, not as much. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, see, that's the thing. There are still the pieces of content that, that are just like, they're, they always seem to go nuts no matter what. Um, but that, that whole idea of someone trying to make someone go viral or make, make something go viral. No, uh, you can't. Yeah, it it it. I, I feel like it used to happen a lot more in the way that you're talking about, uh, and that probably again had a lot to do with the way the algorithm was kind of working on Facebook too. Even uh, even a year ago, you're two years ago. Yeah, yeah, not that long ago, you know. So so you'll notice on your personal account the people you interact with more on Messenger or just their posts. Those are you're going to see their posts more often. You're going to see them you know, quicker, uh, mm-hmm. that person you've been friends with for years, you haven't seen their content in forever. It's because, well, you didn't interact with them at some point for a really long time. And Facebook was like, well, I'm not going to, you know, deliver that. I mean, that, that bothers some folks that it works that way, but 
of things are moving that way or really are already there on Twitter or you know on YouTube. You have AI at work here where it's mm-hmm. it's looking at all this stuff and and deciding what you're probably more likely to enjoy because there's just so much content, right? It's so uh, much. I mean, it's what a thousand hours a, a minute gets put up on, yeah, on, it, on, on YouTube. Netflix is no different. You know, there's that whole idea where people say, oh, Netflix buries all these movies, you know, and all that stuff that, that kind of, that vibe out there you get from folks. Um, sure. It's, it's, you know what, if you had that many titles, even if it was a perfect running list at all, t- like if, if you yeah. went on your Apple TV and saw new releases and it literally listed all of them and didn't pick and choose for you, it, you would have an even harder time finding something to watch because now you have 5,000 things to look at and not, you know, this whatever month. the new 50, <laughs> right? Yeah. This you month. know, so it's like, it's, you, you have to kind of, um, you have to look at it the right way, I suppose. Well, I mean, but, but you have to think about it too and like, look at how much content's being created now. And then what do you think it's going to be like in 20 years? Because right. all of the content that's been created for the last the, the next 20 years and also the past 120 years yeah. is going to be accessible. Yeah. So without these algorithms, without people figuring out what you like and what you want to see, you can't dig through it all. That's it's- correct. And then without and with and in, and not in the future, like literally right now, if you're if you're an indie filmmaker that has an indie movie and you don't budget an actual chunk of money for like a targeted ad spend what should be the percentage by the way what what's that what's the percentage of budget it's not it's not really a percentage it's it's just um how much you got (laughs) yeah truthfully i mean i when i try and explain to folks who want to actually pay you know to to have their trailer launched and they want to get the best prices and all that like they know i'm sitting there with a calculator like a big nerd trying to get them (laughs) the most people per dollar Mm -hmm. um Everybody always asks because that's the the typical way you think about it, right? I pay this much, I get what, right? Mm-hmm. And it and it's it's like no no no, it it doesn't work like buying a you know a pair of underwear at Walmart. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't work that way. It's not that transactional. It's in flux. It depends on all these different factors. But once you find out your scalable costs, right? After that first few days, like if I launch a trailer. And I put a hundred dollars a day on, uh, say, I have like five grand to spend or ten grand to spend on on some movie that's going to come out on iTunes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if I put five different ad sets out there at a hundred dollars a day, uh, and I've done a good job of kind of like in pre production on a movie, right? Thinking mm-hmm. through target groups and being smart about it. Um, within that first few days. I can see and weed out. Okay, that's not going to work, right? And I'll find whatever my lowest cost per completed view is probably going to be right in the long haul. Mm -hmm. And then it's just math. Do you want to pay for 10,000 of those or a hundred thousand of those? It's going to cost you, you know, a dime a piece or a nickel a piece or, you know, whatever. So it, it doesn't become about for 10 grand, you know, yes, I can infer you're going to get probably within a certain range if if the movie's good and I have a good trailer and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. But for a typical indie movie, you know, um, at least if it was my movie and I had five grand to spend, yeah, I can get, I can get half a million people, you know, ha- half a million views on that trailer. I can't get half a million people to finish it for that amount of money, but you know, and a good average just to give people an idea. And this is way different than industry averages, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 it's, it's, it's not like trying to sound like a source of pride. It's just, I go a lot deeper, I think. And I don't, care about the vanity numbers as much. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, industry averages, it's like, if you can get 10 to 15% of the people who start it to finish it, you're doing pretty good. Pretty damn uh, good, actually. Yeah. You know, and if, and if, uh, and I've seen, uh, there's something I'm running right now where, because I was able to be involved in the actual, um, cutting down of the trailer and, and, you know, kind of trying to perfectly as best we could get it to where it, from a content standpoint, need to be, that one's doing 30 right now. Um, you know, and the completed views are less than three cents, like completed views. They watched 90 seconds of it for three cents. So it, it, after, after, a, after the beginning of a campaign, then it does just become math. Like, and for any movie, any indie film or big movie, it, it how many people do you want to get to? Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, it's it, just like anything else. Your amount of awareness is probably going to dictate a certain amount of your sales and, how much of that can you afford? And did you budget for any at all? Um, 
So that that's the thing. As a filmmaker that kickstarts a film, I realize you're working with very different numbers or, or someone who's got a small indie, very different numbers. But if you come to the table with even a really good movie, you know, with a great trailer that has everything I'm talking about, you know, to, to have ad spend on it, but you don't have any money, mm-hmm. um, <sighs> busting through the noise anymore is is literally, you know, that idea of like, you know, thoughts and prayers getting, you know, beat up. <laughs> yeah. a truckload of it, thoughts and prayers just arrived. That's, that's basically what you're counting on. Um, sure. and, and it's just not, it's not good to bank on anymore. I think, I think a filmmaker with a good, uh, you know, good movie coming out that does everything that I'm talking about, but has even just a few thousand to spend, mm-hmm. you are in a better position than, than you can possibly imagine if it's spent well. I mean, it's just, that's more, measurable awareness than a lot of these movies will ever get um like yeah but like ju- the justice league that's coming out soon they're not <laughs> they i mean they are spending 200 million dollars oh yeah they will yeah. have no idea the only the only metrics they have is box office numbers that's it right yeah you know, right and then but also like, awareness the scenes yeah. who's looking at all of those numbers and building audiences and retargeting i don't know how efficient it is at those spend levels right like yeah. you can if, if someone forces you to spend a lot of money really fast the efficiency will go way down because you're forcing facebook to deliver ads that are not the most efficient time right, right, right. To, to for it to show up so you don't want to blow a bunch of your money really fast if you're if you're not if you don't have justice league right sure sure uh, so, so yeah, it, it, it's just how to get people, this is really my big thing. I guess my big pitch for why I think this stuff is important is I'm just, just imagine being able to know that if I budget this amount of money and do a few of these things and, and focus on this, um, or get somebody to help, you know, who knows I can get, say it was only 10,000 people to finish watching my trailer. And I know they finished it, mm-hmm. you know, and I know that they were the right target zone and the messaging said it was on iTunes and Amazon. No, I can't connect any one of those people directly to a sale because none of the companies allow you to. Um, but that is so much better than what any of us had to work with 10 years ago. Oh right? God! Yes. I mean, it just it drives me insane because I I know because I was there. I mean, it just it was so hard to know where your money was going and what it was doing. You would just hand it to some guy who promised you a bunch of impressions with a frequency cap, and you were like, right, uh, right, sure. yeah, yeah, a thousand, you know, okay. yeah, th- what, what, it's per per thousand CPM, or, oh. and and also the social media aspect of this, you couldn't interact with people that, that were commenting. I mean, now people can comment and you can say, thank you so much. You know, I'm so glad you loved my movie. Hey, build relationships. Yeah. You can start building a relationship with people in a way that, that was never possible before. So, um, I know, I know that people like, there might be some folks that'll listen to this and be like, this guy, you know, just sounds like a sales guy or something like, I think this is one of the only ways that I'll personally ever get to keep making movies. I mean, it's just, I have no idea how it's going to be possible anymore unless everyone starts sitting down and trying to, to look at this stuff more. Some folks will get lucky, right? They, they, they make the perfect movie at the perfect time that finds the right person and gets sold somewhere and ends up in the big machine and they can't even do this for their own movie. You know, like that. No, happens. no, no. What you do is you make a movie for like, you know, half a million dollars, you give it to a distributor uh, and let them uh, go out there and sell it and you'll never get a dime. And that's a great business model, I think. <laughs> and it's like and you know what's funny is that eventually someone on a lot of these teams is going to end up doing some of this anyway yeah you know so even even in the bigger machines out there um they hire someone like you they're <laughs> sure why not you know drop drop me an email it's like i i i i I think people need to understand this stuff more in order to um to right. succeed at pretty much any level and i've seen that with movies that are opening and 2000 theaters and movies that are only showing up on iTunes. It's like, um, I, I, and I've seen what happens when it doesn't go very well, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, when the movie is just a really tough sell and at a tough time or, or, or whatever. I mean, that exists. Right. Uh, and then when it goes so good, uh, and and it's so fun to watch because you just know, Oh man, I mean, what I'm getting, for, for five cents on this is just outrageous. And this little movie is getting, uh, three times the value, you know, than, than what they're paying for like that. I enjoy that. Um, just personally, it was fun to watch on my own movie, uh, my own projects. And it's fun to watch it happen on other folks' movies. I just, uh, 
Uh, hopefully this conversation has demystified some of it. I know it's like super dense and heavy. God. And, and there's a, yeah, this, yeah, we, our conversation definitely went into the weeds, but for somebody, for filmmakers who are just, you know, trying to figure this out, like, guys, this is what you need to do. You know, what Kyle is saying is, is, is right. I've, I learned a lot of this myself. I'm still learning. I learned stuff in this conversation. You know, it's constantly changing, but you need to be able to do this on your own to succeed. Like, like you were saying, Kyle, like, I, I don't know how else you can make movies, it, you know, on a low budget by yourself without understanding the marketing aspect of it and specifically the power of what Facebook can provide your, your film. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, I think, uh, one last, one last thing I'll add that, mm -hmm. you know, cause I'm, I'm trying to think again, right. I'm taking the filmmaker cap off for a second, putting the marketing hat on is, uh, you know, if there's any folks out there, I'm assuming, I don't know what your audience base is of your listeners. You know them better than I do, but I'm mm -hmm. assuming there's quite a few out there that want to do, want to be making movies, but they're probably still, uh, they haven't made a feature yet or, or they're making short films or they're trying to kind of find their way in. Um, you might look at this as a great way to do exactly what you're hoping these short films do. You know, that if you're making content in hopes of finding an audience of people, or if you're trying to discover who you are as an artist, mm -hmm. you know, um, do, learning it this way at a smaller level with the smaller budgets. And, you know, you would be really well off, I think, making that short film for very little money or no money with your friends imagine putting just a little bit of an actual budget on trying to push it to an audience on a platform like Facebook mm -hmm. um, instead of just kind of tweeting it and hoping, you know, some, see it. some people will, right? Like they're, I'm not saying all these other things don't work and don't have value, like, like traditional PR, even like when you have a movie coming out and stuff, it's not about that. I mean, I think that there's this whole universe that's being ignored by folks that are doing all these other right things, but they haven't considered how um, powerful these tools are, not just when you have a feature to, to, you know, to pay back and all that, but even just when you have a passion project that you did for nothing with your friends and you want as many people as possible to see it. Or if you, you know, seen amazing short films about like issues, they're issue driven or they're about suicide or, mm -hmm. you know, I know like, you know, there's what's going on with the Weinsteins and everything, mm -hmm. right. These remember that short series that came out recently. It was mm -hmm. kind of about that. Mm -hmm. um, imagine making something personal like that. And for no other reason than just enjoying it, period, but wanting as many people to see it as possible, why not put it on, on Facebook and, and put a little bit of that? But if you're going to spend anything, why not try and spend it there? Uh, if there's any shot at finding an audience of people that like, really like your work or like what you have to say, mm -hmm. um, it might actually be great to start small there and push something with, with, with ad spend. Uh, on Facebook in a video views environment. Like that's something that I haven't seen a lot of people do because they're kind of hoping the short film will be, it'll just go viral or some the right person will see it. Maybe the right person is the person on their phone right now in their living room. And because you haven't done this, they're not going to see it. Let me ask you a real quick question and then we're going to stop. Cause we sure. have, we have, cause we could keep going <laughs> for hours, Kyle, yeah, as you yeah. can tell I'm into this. Uh, and it's really great, valuable information, but would it make sense that you make a short film and what does a, a filmmaker who makes a short film want happen? They want that short film to be seen by the right people in Hollywood, let's say, mm -hmm. that yeah. will look at that, that, that short film and go, oh, I want to talk to that filmmaker about making the feature or about signing them or about whatever, right? Mm -hmm. With the power of Facebook, couldn't you research people, agents at CAA, ICM? Uh, William Morris Endeavor. <laughs> know exactly where you're going. And Screw. focus on and, and find them on Facebook. You, I mean, this is going to be research. This is going to be like mm -hmm. off, off site research, but you mm -hmm. find these agents that you want to focus on and literally just push those videos towards those specific people on a constant, you know, you know, just constantly pushing to the point where <laughs> you can make something go viral on in the CAA world. You know, like all these, these assistance agents and assistance to agents and agents start talking about, I'm just throwing this out there. I just had no, this no, idea. No. I mean, I'm telling you that not only is that possible, but that happens all the time. I mean, yeah. it's like buying, you think, you think big advertising buyers aren't buying a billboard, traditional billboard 
um, and buying the one that they know is near the home of the the executive that they need to impress <laughs> like that 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 i i mean i'm telling you for a fact because it actually happens mm-hmm. you know that's actually something that's a thing you know you're trying to impress a certain person you know um yeah there are plenty of times where that sort of thing is done in traditional advertising just to impress you know um you people the- that need to feel like something's happening. Like it happens all the time. So this is no different. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Like you're buying the billboard across the street from CAA's, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oscar and campaigns, right? Oscar right. campaigns are so focused on, on where all of the voters are. And there's mm-hmm. billboards everywhere. It seems at those, that time of year and, and traditional ads, like you think they're not putting in zip codes where the, where the voters are concentrated. Of course. Exactly. Yeah. So it's and the same, it, same concept. It truthfully is. It's the same idea. So like that, that sound, it might sound like, man, that sounds kind of slimy, but like, no. dude, this, this is, this is the world we live in now. Dude, um, this is war, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> this is a hustle, dude. You gotta, yeah. you gotta go in there and you gotta do what you gotta do to get the, get, a, you know, I mean, <laughs> ethically and morally, but what I just said has, that's just marketing. It is. It's yeah. it. What it is. What it is, Alex. Is it's the indie film hustle. <laughs> hey, and that's a great place to end this. Now, um, what? Where can people find you? Uh, and if they are interested in possibly hiring you uh, to work, oh, be- best place to to reach out to me is like on Twitter. You know, my my handle is just Kyle Prask. It's just my full name. I'll put, <laughs> I will I'll, I'll put it and I'll put it all in the in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. Way. Or look me up on Facebook. I'll chat there. You know, pretty much. You know, anywhere I, you can get a hold of me. Uh, nobody has my name. That's one great thing about. <laughs> I think there's <laughs> there's one other kid on Facebook who has my name, mm-hmm. and that's it. So all right, cool. Kyle, man, this has been epic. Uh, I, I hope we did some good here today. Thank you so so much for demystifying. Facebook and Facebook ads and, and how filmmakers can use Facebook to, to get their movie out there and hopefully make some money and, 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 and survive and thrive in this yeah, business, man. Thank you for your Facebook ninja skill, sir. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I warned you it was definitely going to be an epic episode. And I want to thank Kyle for just, just opening up and sharing all of his knowledge in regards to Facebook, Facebook ads and how to market on Facebook. So I hope you guys got, a lot out of it. I did. I, I, I've been doing this for a few years and using Facebook and I learned a lot talking to Kyle. So it is your responsibility as a filmmaker to understand social media. It is as, as imperative as you understand in camera, lenses, writing, working with an actor, social media and marketing your film and your projects and yourself is so important. So you need to understand this stuff, guys. So I hope this episode kind of jump started your curiosity about what to do uh, with Facebook specifically and building up your social media ecosystem. Now, if you want links to anything we spoke about in this episode, head over to the show notes at filmtrepreneur.com forward slash zero four two. And I want to thank everybody who has downloaded or bought my book, Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, and leaving those good reviews. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you so, so much. If you want to check out any other books that we have at IFH Books, You can pick up Shooting for the Mob, which is my mini bio on how I almost made a $20 million film for the Mafia, and the newest addition to the IFH Books family, Writing for Emotional Impact by the legendary Carl Iglesias, and it really helps you focus on the emotion of your writing in a screenplay and how to get people's attention from the page. And if you want to check that out, just head over to bulletproofscreenwriting.tv. Thank you guys again so much for listening. I hope you're all staying safe out there. It is, uh, it's getting scary, uh, but we are going to make, make it through this without question. We are all in this together. Wash your hands, be safe, and as always, be a film entrepreneur. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Film Entrepreneur Podcast at filmtrepreneur.com. 